at the person next to you and say, Happy New Year. All right. I am so excited to be here today. Um, and uh, I actually flew in last night. My kids have been gone since December 25th. So we celebrated Christmas, gave them gifts, and they jumped in a car with my in-laws and like went on this like you know, deep south tour. They went to Tennessee, to North Carolina, and a lot of people are probably, oh man, you guys had a great time, you know, without the kids. We did. We had a great time. <laughs> we had a great time without the kids. We went on a bunch of date nights, and uh, it was awesome, but I miss them because my wife has amazing routines where she falls asleep pretty much every day at the same time. She wakes up super early. She's a nurse, so she has to be in the hospital real early. And so I have my little routines that I do with the kids after she goes to bed. I I tickle them. I I sit on Joshie's couch and talk with Joshie and mess around with Caleb. And Leilani's asleep. She's in her world at that time. And so my nights, you know, I ended up playing with the dogs a little bit more and stuff and talking to myself. Um, But it was great. It was great actually spending time with you, babe. I love you. Um, I like doing nice things for my wife. Any husbands here like doing nice things for their wife? right? Has it ever happened that you wanted to do a nice thing with your wife and it didn't work out, right? Well, I am the champion of that. Um, Leilani would always tell me, I'm a techie guy. You see, I'm preaching with an iPad and um, I always like to have like the latest and greatest things. I'm, I'm part of the AT&T Next program, so I get a new phone every time there's a new phone that comes out. And um, one day, uh, Leilani probably had like a th- a three, like three different versions behind me phone, right? And, and she started, oh, you always have the latest things, this and that. I'm like, well, you never asked me. She's like, whenever you get a new phone, get me a new phone, right? And so I did it as a surprise one day. And I waited for her in her routine, go to sleep around 9.30, 10 o'clock, whenever it is she goes to bed. And when I heard her purring, that's what I call her snoring, she purrs at night, <laughs> Right? Um, I'm like, okay, she's in deep sleep. So I grab her phone, and I have to be like, she. you can like scream in the house. You can drop things in the house. But if you quietly unplug her phone, she wakes up immediately. I I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because she's on call sometimes. Maybe that's why, right? So I grab her phone. I quietly disconnect it. And I go to the living room. And I start trying to figure out how to like upgrade her new phone and you know it's a new phone but there's a new version that came out of the software already and so I'm downloading that into the new phone and I'm trying to get all her contacts and everything ready and after several hours of this I'm done and uh, now I'm like wide awake right because I've been reading stuff watching YouTube videos and I I connect her new phone I'm like she's gonna be so excited when she wakes up in the morning and uh, so I go back and then I'm like oh I'm gonna sell this phone I go on on offer up, and I see like how much her phone's going for on offer up. Oh man, that's like 300 bucks. I make 300 bucks tomorrow. And so I'm like, I clean the phone, I, I erase the phone, I, I reset the phone. And, and uh, she wakes up in the morning, and it's, I thought, you know, you know how sometimes husbands we create this story, and I thought it was gonna be one of those slow motion beach things like. I, 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 in my head, she was going to be so excited to see me and to be like, oh, my God, you got me a new phone. And it was like, where's my phone? I'm like, there, right there. That's not my phone. I'm like, I got you a new phone. And she's like, she's freaking out. She's looking, looking through her phone. And then she's like, where are my pictures? I'm like, your contacts are there. Your email's working. She's like, where are my pictures, Mark Rodriguez? You know there's probably, and I'm glad, Mom, thank you for not giving me a middle name, right? I don't have a middle name, so it's just straight up Mark Rodriguez. Where are my pictures, Mark Rodriguez? I'm like, they're in the cloud, <laughs> right? And guys, I was trying to do something nice, and it didn't work out. And this is a burden that I still carry, and I'm reminded, it was like 10 years ago, I'm reminded about this regularly Whenever anyone's telling some type of tech joke, she's like, yeah, you know, one time Mark deleted all my pictures. I deleted every picture. (laughs) She has no pictures of Stella when Stella was a baby. But there's pictures that other people took, right? I'm like, babe, I took pictures. Yeah, but those are not my 
pictures from the angle and the filters and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and I'm like, babe, I, I was just trying to do something nice. So, well, next time, involve me, right? So I now have PTSD. And so I don't reset anything. Like my phone, if it's glitchy, I keep using it glitchy. My computer, like if it's slow, I keep fighting with it. Why are you so slow? And I don't want to upgrade it. I don't want to reset it. Even though this happened 10 years ago, I'm still struggling with this. Seriously. I mean, when I need to reset something, I call my best friend, Johnny Lopez, and I'm like, hey, Johnny, uh, my computer's running slow. Can you come and reset it? He's like, it's real simple. Just click here, go to settings, hit reset. I'm like, bro, I can't do that. I can't do that. Does anyone else have an issue with resetting stuff, scared you're going to lose stuff? And, and my kids just tell me, Bobby, is that you're getting old? I'm like, no, you don't understand what happened to me, right? But here's the thing. The same way that sometimes our devices need to be reset, sometimes we need a reset. Sometimes we need a reset in our life. We're going to need a reset not just one time, but several times in our life, in different areas of our life. So you may be saying, well, I, I got a reset a couple days ago or, or last year. Yeah, but there's other areas of our life where we need a reset. We need God to do a work in us. And that is what Jesus came to offer. He came to offer us a fresh start, a reset in our life. See, if you ask me to sum up what Love Unlimited Church is all about, it, for, for now about almost four years, next month is our four-year anniversary. I don't know about you, but that's pretty awesome. We're a church that's about changed lives. That's it. Everything we do in church is about lives being changed by the power of Jesus. We're in the change life business, the transformation of life, helping people become what God always intended them to be, to be transformed. If there's something that weighs heavy on me is when I meet someone and I see that they're not meeting the maximum potential of what God created them to be. See, it's not about buildings, thank God, because we don't have one, right? It's not about the size of our church. It's not about the music, even though we have great music. It's not about the messages. It's about change lives. Where do people go when they want to get a change life? That's what I want our church to be known as. You know, like when someone's sick, someone sprains their ankle, oh, take them to the urgent care, right? Or, or you tell them, don't go to that one on 49th Street. Go to the one, you know, uh, in Miami Lakes or whatever the case may be. We know where we send people when they need something, right? You want to get this? You want to get a good burger? Oh, you got to drive to Doral or whatever the case may be. So when we hear, when anyone hears, man, my life is messed up. I need a fresh start. I want Love Unlimited to continue to be a place that's synonymous with a fresh start, synonymous with a changed life. You see, a few weeks ago, I was talking to someone out in the lobby, and, and they're talking to me about, about the church. And, uh, you know, they, they came to me and they said, you know, I wasn't going to come, and I've been seeing stuff on social media. My friend's always posting pictures about the church, so it's important that we do that because people are seeing, right? And I was just curious. I had nothing to do, and I showed up. And I've never been to anything like this before. I wasn't prepared for it. And as soon as I got there, I figured out people were going to be rude. People were going to be stiff. But no, people were happy to see me. They were smiling. They were welcoming me. Immediately, that put me at ease. And so let's give it up for everyone that welcomes people to church. He said, I, I never thought church would be like that. And then he says he walked in and he heard great music and then he started hearing the people singing. And he's like, I started crying. He's like, I don't remember the last time I cried. He literally said, I asked myself, what's wrong with my face? Right? Because he's like, what, what's wrong? Right? When he heard you singing, think about that. Do you realize, what, like, like we just sang right now, I was standing out there, I could hear you guys singing. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to stay here at your feet. You're singing that with all your heart. You know what you're doing? On top of worshiping God and giving him the glory and the honor that he deserves, you're preaching. You are proclaiming the love of God to the people that are around you. When you sing at church, you are witnessing to the people around you. 
They may not hear your voice, but they see your face. They may see your arms. They may see you clapping. They can see the intensity of your passion for God and what God is doing in your life. And that touches people. See, the the service isn't just what happens here. It's what's happening everywhere. The singing, he said, brought tears to my eyes. And and then I, I heard the message and, and God spoke to me. And then, Pastor Mark, you gave us an opportunity to pray at the end. And, and, and I prayed when I heard everyone praying, too. People asked me once, someone asked me once, what, why do you have everyone pray? Because it is encouraging. It is encouraging to the people around you for all of us to pray together because there's many people that are praying that prayer for the first time. Some that are rededicating their life to Christ. And he said, I took it all with great wonder. And at the, close of the surface, at the close of the service, all I could think about is I just got a reset. As I was preparing this message, those words were like ringing. I just got a reset. In a single moment, the direction of my life was reset. Let me tell you something. That's what God wants to do in all of our lives today. If you feel hopeless, if you have doubt, if you're in despair, now your life can be full of hope. Now you can be the one encouraging others. You see, you can go from being guilty to being forgiven. How many people walk in life feeling guilty because of the mistakes that they've made, the things that they've done, and you don't need to walk around with that guilt. You can be forgiven. Your anger can turn to peace. And that is why I'm excited today. I'm so excited today because for two years, we haven't had church in January on a Sunday morning. But here we are today. Here we are today. You see, we had this timeout season, right? COVID kind of messed things up, really messed things up in my life. But let me tell you something. Now that we can do things that we did before, let's not go back to normal We have a new year, an opportunity for a fresh start. God doesn't simply want you to resume your old way of living. He doesn't want you to resume the old things that you used to do. God wants to reset your life and not just reset it, but take you to a higher place. Not put you back to where you were, but to a higher place. You know what reset means? It's up here on the screen. Reset means to make a fresh new start, to begin again. Man, just the thought of that, for some of us in this room that are carrying this guilt and this burden and these like, man, I wish I would have never done that. Let me tell you, if you come to God today, he will give you the reset that you need, the fresh start that you need. Jesus specializes in this, giving people a fresh start. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, you've learned the truth that is in Jesus, the truth that is in Jesus So in regard to your former way of life, put off your old self and be made new in the attitudes of your mind and put on your new self created to be like God, truly good and holy. You know what God is saying here? That once you've invited Jesus into your life, you put your trust in him. You put your hope in him. And there's this process of growth now. There's change happening in your life. Many of you that have begun this journey have probably bumped into people now in this holiday season. And they're like, what's wrong with you? There's something different. You don't look the same. You don't talk the same. You don't act the same. Right? And sometimes we notice when something bad happens, maybe somebody cuts you off on the palmetto. And before, you'd want to run them over. And you just keep driving. And your kids are in the back seat like, yo, is Poppy sick or something? <laughs> right? No, Jesus is working in our life. We're not responding the same way that we used to respond. You see, I kind of look at this kind of like a changing of clothes, right? You're getting ready to go to an event and you take off your dirty and your old and your sweaty clothes and you put on new clothes. You don't leave the old clothes. And let me tell you something. I have two teenage boys. And it's like we tell them things that sometimes sound stupid, right? Hey, guys, we're going to a wedding. Take a shower. Wash under your arms, right? Brush your teeth. Wash your hair. 
Uh, don't put on the old socks. Put on new socks. Right? It sounds funny. But if you have a teenage boy, you know that you got to go through that dumb. And then don't wear the same shoes you were playing basketball and put the nice shoes that we bought you. However, for a lot of us, when it comes to our relationship with God, we cover up a lot of times. Right? We're getting ready to go to church. I got to put my church face on. Right? You got the dirty clothes on, but let me put on a sweater so I can cover it up a little bit and some cologne. But when time goes by, you're still dirty. You're still stinky. You're still a mess. And God's saying, forget the old things. Forget the old ways. I got new clothes for you. I got a new way of living for you. And so you're probably thinking, okay, Pastor Mark, how do I reset my life? How do I reset my life? It doesn't matter if you're in a retirement age, if you're in your midlife, whether you're just starting out, whether you're 20, you're 15, you're 10. All of us, if we want to reset, if we want a fresh start, the first thing that we need to do is we need to ask God to do something new in me. God, do something new in me. And you just don't ask this one time. You keep bringing it to him every single day, a couple times a day. God, do something new in me. We just celebrated Christmas. And if you're a parent and you have a child, you know, like when you're trying to figure out what am I going to get my kids for Christmas, and they ask you for something like well, only one time, you're like, ah, oh, they don't really want that. That was kind of like a whim. Or, but if they keep asking, oh, I really want this, I really want this, I really want this, and they ask you over and over again, you're like, okay, this isn't just a whim. They really want this. God says if you are serious about changing your life, if you're serious about being a different person, a man of God, a woman of God, if you're serious about breaking some of those bad habits in your life, I need you to tell me. Now, you may wonder, is it okay for me to ask God to do something new in my life? Let me tell you something. Not only is it good, that's what he wants. That's what he's there for. He wants to do something new in your life. As a matter of fact, it's in Jesus' job description. In Revelations 21, 5, it says, I am making everything new. He wants to make everything in our life new. It doesn't say I'm making everything boring. I'm making everything the same. I'm going to put you back where you were. He's saying, I'm making everything new. This is what Jesus does. Jesus transforms life. So if you're tired of the old way of living, this is the guy that you come to. He makes everything new. You don't go to your friend that's a loser. You don't go to some fortune teller. You don't go to a book. You don't go to a blog or an Instagram account. Oh, my God, I read the greatest thing on Instagram. Don't base your life off of, off of Instagram because you're going to fall off a cliff one day. All right? It's happened. Hundreds of people, if not thousands of people, have died taking Instagram pictures. Google it. It's happened. I remember when we went to Europe years ago, before we had kids, we've been saving for this like special like trip and and like social media was just getting a kickstart and stuff and and the tour guide said a couple fell off this cliff and i'm like oh my gosh did someone push them no they were trying to take a picture my friends don't base your life off of what you see on social media unless it's the stuff i post don't be <laughs> just kidding not even me okay unless i'm talking about jesus forget about it all right a few weeks ago, we talked about David and Bathsheba. You guys remember? If you missed the message, it's on our YouTube page. Watch it. It was an amazing message of the hope of God. David messed up, and he prayed this prayer that we should pray, that we should pray today. It's in Psalm 51.10. It says, God, make me, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. I love that translation from the message translation. Create, shape a Genesis week. Genesis is the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, right? That's how some of our lives are right now. They're a mess. And God showed up and had a new beginning that God would create a Genesis week in your life today. And all you need to do is ask. You're probably thinking, oh, but King David was, was an amazing man, a man after God's own heart. He wrote that right after he had an affair and killed the husband of the woman he had an affair with. 
I promise, I think, I hope, that no one here has done that. So if God can forgive David, he can forgive you. And he could do a fresh start in you. This is not just a good prayer. This is a significant moment in your life where you tell God, God, take everything that I've done and erase it. I would encourage you, man, write this on a card, take a picture of it, or put it on your notes. Maybe make it the the screensaver on your phone. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. That that would be your prayer every single day. God, make me new. Make me fresh. God will forgive you. You see, the message of Jesus is a message of grace. This is the gospel, how God takes messed up people and transforms them, and not just transforms them, uses them, uses them to do good, and not just to change their own lives, but to change the life of the people that are around them. You can get a fresh start in your life today if you come to God and you just say, God, I need a fresh start. I'm carrying too much baggage. This load is too heavy. I'm carrying too much sin. I'm carrying too much guilt. I'm carrying too many regrets. Let me tell you something. A lot of us are living in the past. Every single day we wake up and we're depressed and we're sad and we're burdened and we're full of regret because we're living in the past. Yeah, we've done dumb things. And you can't change what you did. See, and let me tell you something, and I hope this sets you free today. You are a product of your past but you're not a prisoner of your past. You are a product of your past, but you're not a prisoner of your past. So if you feel enslaved by your past and your past mistakes, the one holding the key to get out of there is you. You're the one that's keeping, oh, but look, remember what I did. You don't know what happened to me. Hey, tell me so that we can pray and thank God for what he's going to do in your life. When you surrender to him and you trust him, you are not a prisoner That means you could change it. That means that today, if you really believe it, you can walk out of that cell. That is the gospel. That is the good news. That is what Christianity is all about. A lot of people say, I don't understand Christianity. That's because you're looking at Christians. Look to Jesus. Stop following people and follow Jesus. And you get a new life. You are born again. You get new freedom. And you get a second chance and a third chance and a 100th chance here's what god says about your past this isn't just pastor mark talking isaiah 43 says this the lord says forget the former things forget the past don't dwell on the past think about that think about the saddest moments of your life what were you dwelling on the future or the past think about maybe what a friend was telling you the other day what were they dwelling on the future or the past. It says, instead, look at the new things I'm going to do. They're already starting to happen. Can you see what I've begun to do? Man, we serve an amazing God full of hope and peace and joy. But so many of us choose to stay in that prison of our past. God says, stop constantly looking at the rearview mirror. If you're always looking at the rearview mirror, what's going to happen? You're going to crash, right? If you're driving and all you're doing is you're going to crash. You're going to hit someone. You're going to drive off the road. And that's why think about this practically. How many people are living crashed lives? How many people emotionally have crashed? How many people emotionally are off track? We use these words in our common conversation. Oh, they're off track right now. Oh, they crashed. Oh, they're they're depressed. You're driving looking at the rearview mirror. Look to the future. Look forward. God is saying today, stop looking back. Start asking God, do something new in me. Let's say that together. God, do something new in me. Let's say it again. God, do something new in me. You know why sometimes we may feel that nothing is happening in our life? Like, really, you look at other people, man, something's happening. Oh, wow, he's, she's dating someone now. Oh, my gosh, they got a raise. Oh, they're on this vacation. Oh, look at all this stuff that's happening. 
You know why nothing new is happening in your life? Because you're not asking. You're not asking God. James 4, 2 says this. You do not have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You don't ask, tell God today, I need a fresh start. I've blown it. I've made big mistakes. Mistakes, plural. I need a fresh start. I need a reboot in my life. I need renewed energy, renewed spirit, renewed hope, a renewed heart. The first step is saying, God, I need a reset. The second step is this. Be specific with what you want changed. What do you want changed in you? Be specific. Here's the second thing, preparing for this. Pinpoint specifically, God, I need you to change this in me. If you want a brand new start, be specific with what with you want God to change in you. See, nothing becomes transforming until it becomes specific. Think about that. Men, I'm going to give you the perfect illustration. Perfect. Hey, babe, what do you want to eat tonight? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? I don't know. Whatever you want. That's a lie. (laughs) It's not whatever you want. This is like the curse from the Garden of Eden, right? What do you want to eat? Whatever you want. No. What she's really saying is become a mind reader and figure it out, right? Because it's not whatever you want to eat. And it's funny, but our prayers are the same way with God. God, I want to be happy. God, fix me. God, do protect my kids. No, be specific with God. God, help me love my wife the way that you love me. God, right now, my kids are driving on the turnpike. God, I pray that they would not get into any accidents, that they would behave in the car. Lord, wake up my father-in-law so that he drives clearly and safely. I miss them so much. Thank you, God, for my kids. That's being specific. Be specific with God. Don't just say, God, I I want you to change me. You can't change generality. You can't change that. You can't just say, God, just... Change this. Change whatever you want. Do whatever you want, God. That's not true. God, I need you to change my attitude. God, my anger. I have an anger problem, God. God, I'm a cheater, God. Help me stop cheating in 2023. Help me stop lying in 2023. Lord, help me to love my wife more. Help me to be faithful to my wife. Help me to be faithful to my husband. God, I want to buy a new house on this block, in this neighborhood. Before we moved into the house that we live in now, we used to walk around the block and say, God, we want this house. Oh, but how are we going to get this house? I don't know, babe, but I want that house. And guess what? One day I got a call, and they asked me, do you want this house? Literally, ask my wife. She is my Jiminy Cricket fact checker better than Twitter. All right? (laughs) That's exactly what happened. I got a call and said, hey. Do you want this house? And that's where we've been living for the last six years. If you feel helpless today, it's because you're not asking for help. Helpless. You are without help because you are not asking for help. Second Corinthians says this. Look closely at yourself. Test yourself to see if you're really living in faith. Many times we don't ask God because we don't believe. We don't have faith that he can do it. I have this thing that I bought yesterday. The last thing I did on my trip is I went to the Billy Graham uh, Training Center in Asheville. And this looks like a metal lifesaver, right? But in the middle, you probably can't even see it as a mustard seed, right? And it says on it, it says, all things are possible. The Bible says that if you have Faith the size of that little speck in there, you can move mountains. You know why we don't move mountains? You know why I don't move mountains? Because I don't believe. Because I don't have the faith that it takes. I doubt God. Let's stop doubting God in our life. Let's start living the life that he had created us to be. Start asking, God, how's my connection with you? Do I need to reset my priorities? How about my relationships? That's a specific prayer. God, this relationship that I'm in, should I stay in it or should I get out of it? How about your career? 
Maybe some of you have put your career on pause because you're playing it safe. Be specific. God, should I apply for this job? Should I quit my job? And then do what God is calling you to do. What are the things happening in your marriage? Does your marriage need a reset? Let me tell you something, that no marriage is ever in a standstill. At every point in your marriage, you're either growing closer or you're growing apart. At every single second that you are married, you're either being drawn to that person or you're drawing apart from that person. No marriage is at a standstill. You're either growing closer together or you're drifting apart. Maybe you need a reset in your marriage. You need to refall in love. Let me tell you something. A specific prayer that I have in my life is, God, help me fall in love with my wife every single day, more and more. That's how you love more, is that you ask God to give you the capacity to love more, to love God beyond the shortcomings of your partner. God, teach me to love her. Oh, but why doesn't she love me? Love her, and she'll love you back. Love him, and he will love you back. In almost 20 years of marriage, I've had to re-up my commitment over and over and over again. How about our routines? Do we need a reset in our routines? Some of us, our routines fell out of whack. Two years in COVID, the things that you used to do, you stopped doing them, and a lot of people have stayed in the same bad habits. Reset your habits. Replace some bad habits With good habits. I have a friend of mine that's winning big time in life. And all he did was replace his bad habit with a good habit. That's what some of us need to do. How about our parenting? Do we need to reset how we parent our kids? I bought a book yesterday, How to Raise Fearless Children. Fearless Children that Love God. I bought it yesterday. I'm going to start reading it this week. Even though my kids are now 14, 15, and 11, I'm still raising them. God, how can I raise them to be fearless? Fearless when it comes to the things of this world. Fearless when it comes to the attacks of the enemy. Some of you need to reset your dream. You had amazing dreams at one point in your life. Incredible. Like People told you that you were crazy. And because of that, you took your foot off the gas. You pumped the brakes. You put the car in neutral. And those crazy dreams are gone, and now you're caught in this hamster wheel of just your daily tasks. Let me tell you something. The only dreams that God is a part of are crazy dreams. Not basic dreams, because we can do basic things on our own. Crazy things that are unbelievable. We serve the God of unbelievable things. With, we don't need faith. Seriously, if I tell you guys, hey, after church, I'm going to go to Moral Castle... And I'm going to order un bistec a caballo. You don't need faith for that. That's easy. I can do that. And they've been making bistec a caballo since they were in Cuba. Right? But if I tell you I'm going to show up there and I'm going to buy the entire shopping center, that's crazy. And God can do that. That is what trusting God is. That is what having faith is. You see... I believe that God is going to do incredible things in our life. And every single person here is someone that could change the world. We could do that. But it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable sometimes. But the results are incredible. And now I need to talk to a group of people that are probably thinking, right now you're sitting here, and you're like, man, he's so excited about that. and That's awesome. I know there's people here that need a reset. You know, my husband needs a reset. My, my kids need a reset. You know what? You're probably thinking, I don't need a reset. My life is great. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear. Romans 12, 3. Don't think that you're better than you really are. Decide what you really are by the amount of faith God has given you. Trust me, you're not perfect, and you need a reset too. And if you don't understand that, if you don't believe that, then you're so out of touch, and you're trying to convince yourself that everything is okay. You rationalize, and you know what rationalize means? It's up here on on the screen. Rationalize means you tell yourself rational lies. That's what rationalizing is, and many of us, that's, that's the space that we live in. The third thing we need to do to succeed in this reset 
is find people to support my reset. Find people to walk with you through this reset. It takes humility. It takes humility to walk up to someone and say, hey, these are my plans. These are my shortcomings. These are my faults. And I know I can do this because I reached out to God. And now I need you to keep me accountable on this reset. As long as you think you could do it on your own, you're not going to succeed. You're not going to have it your way. You're not going to do what you, you know. Now, some of you are so inspired, and I've had conversations. I was so inspired. God was calling me to do this, and then I fell, and then I broke down, and then this tragedy happened, and, and everything fell apart. You can't do it alone. Ecclesiastes 4, 12 says this, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. And three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. You can't do it on your own. You need people to walk with you on this journey that you're in. You need someone to pick you up when you fall. Ecclesiastes 4.10 says, if one person falls, another can reach out and help them. But people who are alone when they fall are in real trouble. If you feel you're in real trouble right now, this is because you've been trying to solve and do everything on your own. There's so many people that try to give you this impression that they're so self-sufficient and so powerful, and I don't need anyone. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I don't need anyone to buy me anything. Have you ever gone out with someone and they never let you, like, buy them a a, a coffee? Because they're self-sufficient. They're trying to satisfy and fill the lie in their life, and it's a leaky bucket, so they got to keep filling it with more lies. Community is God's antidote to discouragement, defeat, and failure. Community is God's antidote to discouragement, defeat, and failure. You can't do life on your own. That's why today I want to encourage you guys to sign up for our socials, men and women. It's the QR code in front of you. You want to succeed in this reset? Join one of these groups. They were amazing. I I didn't even lead one. I attended one, and God transformed me. I remember in the middle of a hurricane, we were sitting under like an outdoor patio getting wet, And everyone showed up. I think more people showed up that day of the hurricane. I don't know if they didn't want to put shutters up in their house or or they wanted to hang out with the boys. But, man, God changed so many of us in that group, and he could do it for you. And so I encourage you. Oh, my God, but I'm embarrassed. You'll you'll be more embarrassed when you wreck your life. promise you. Show up, and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So I encourage you, if you have questions after, just go to the concierge area. You could ask questions there. Romans 12.5 says, Since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other. See, you don't just belong to yourself. You belong to all of us. Each of us needs all the others. You belong to me, and I belong to you. Isn't there a song that says that? (laughs) And you know what that means? That means when, when I don't show up, you're robbing me of something. I'm robbing you of something. When you don't show up to that group that you signed up for, there was probably someone that day that says, I can't wait to see Mark tonight because I need to talk to him about something. And then Mark doesn't show up. I robbed him of something. You know this? This is tough. And this is why we need to reach out to our families, to our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our uncles. Our physical families, they don't last. They die. And some of us have experienced that. Some of us have have experienced that recently. People grow up. They get married. They move away. Physical families don't last. But your spiritual family is going to last forever, for eternity. And so if we have family that are believers and passed away, hey, they're living the life right now. They're living the life. One of the things, I, I put it on my Instagram yesterday when I was at the, the Billy Graham uh, training center. There was a picture of him, and he used to say this. He wrote it in his book. He says, I'm going to paraphrase, if you ever hear that Billy Graham has died, don't believe it. Because he is living the best days of his life. Man, that's incredible faith because, you know, I'm not scared of dying, but I don't want to die, Right? 
The thought of death and, and not being with my wife and my kids and my family and you guys, I mean, it weighs heavy on me. Like, I'm getting emotional now thinking of it. But I know the assurance that I have in Christ. And then when I go to that second life and eternity with Jesus, I will know God fully. I will be fully known. And I will live forever. And so it is important that we reach out to our family. We reach out and share the gospel with as many people as possible. And that we show up to church. In this new year, make a commitment to God that church is a priority. It's not something we do when we don't have a party. It's not something we do when they didn't invite us fishing. It's not something that we do when the dolphins are playing at 11 o'clock. Right? No. Church, I'm committed to that. I'm committing to showing up. Even if I'm a super Christian, there's people showing up that need me. That need my smile. That need my help. My love. There may be someone showing up today that needs me to pray for them. You belong to me and I belong to you. To you. Think about the story that I told you of that man telling me that when he got here, he didn't talk about Jesus until the end. He saw your smiles and felt welcome. The barriers started coming down. He was sat in a chair by an usher and he felt appreciated and important. It's only dignitaries and special people that, hey, hey, we have a seat for you. But we do that here with as many people as we can. When we have the people to serve on Sunday, we want everyone to feel, hey, God has a place for you. And then when he heard you singing, he didn't talk about the band, even though they're awesome. He talked about the people that are singing out of tune in their chair. The shower singers. And tears started coming down his face. I belong to you and you belong to me. Hebrews 10, 25 says this. So let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage one another. Let us not give up the habit. Make a commitment today that I'm going to be an active part of the church family. I'm going to be active. I'm going to serve. I'm going to show up. I'm going to go to outreaches. Let me tell you something. I've been a pastor for almost 20 years. I've counseled so many people. I've counseled so many couples and teenagers and, and people, you know, that, that want to, are suicidal. I've sat in hospital beds, and I've, I've heard people tell, oh, my God, I can't believe he did this. And I've never once, and I promise, I'm not exaggerating, I've never once sat down with someone that felt that their life was falling apart that told me. I, have, I spend time with God every day. I read my Bible every day. I go to church every week. I serve. I go to outreaches. I am involved with the body of Christ. God is a priority in my life. I had never heard anyone say, couples in marriage counseling, our marriage is falling apart. And I don't know why. We both love God. We pray together. We serve together with a joyful heart. Not because I'm forced to, but serve God with a joyful heart. We're seeking God with purpose and intention. And, and all of a sudden, our, our family's falling apart. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And you can go back in your timeline of life. And many of us that have, are going through difficulties or have gone through difficulties can put your finger on the day that you decided to not make God a priority in your life. And after that, little by little, things started falling apart. Problems with your kids kids doing drugs, kids wanting to leave, kids having sex, you know, you hanging out with the boys more than you're hanging out with your wife. And then five years later, oh my God, my life is falling apart. I don't know why. I love Jesus. Jesus loves you too. But you're making decisions that are derailing your life. You're driving, looking at the rear view mirror of how things used to be. And you're not looking forward. And you're now driving off the road. The last thing is this, eliminate anything that is unhelpful or unhealthy. Eliminate anything and everything that is unhelpful or unhealthy. Hebrews 12 once says this, we should remove anything from our lives that would get in the way and the sin that so easily holds us back. In the New King James Version, it says, the sin that so easily entangles me. Anybody here ever fished before? Most of you must 
have fished. Or Listen, when you're fishing and you forget to like put that little thing. I'm not an avid fisherman. I go fishing once a year and I have someone else hook it and I just reel it in. Right? It's awesome and you feel great and it looks great on Instagram. Right? But you know what happens to me all the time? My reel gets all tangled up and then I try to fix it. Has anybody ever tried to fix it when it gets all tangled up? You make a bigger mess and the knots get harder and it's not until I suck it up and say, yo, captain, I'm sorry I did it again. Can you, can you fix my reel? And you know what has always happened? He gives me a new rod. He doesn't fix my reel. He's like, I can't fix this. I'm making everything new. And that's what Jesus wants to do in your life today. He wants to make everything new. Stop messing with the mess that you've made and ask God today, reset my life. Some of us, you you need a reset in technology. Sometimes some of us need a reset in our mind and the things that we put in there, the things that we're feeding it. Some of you need to cancel channels on your cable, on your Apple TV, on your Hulu. There are programs and things that are coming into your spirit that are derailing you. There, there are social media accounts that you have to stop following. I stopped following every social media account that showed me a butt. All of them. And all the Miami ones do all the time. It's like, only in date, a car crash, car crash, and then, like, I'm out. I don't need that in my life. I know that people don't know how to drive in Miami. So I don't need to watch cars on fire and then a booty. Da, 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 da. Like, I don't need that. So I stopped following all that. Some of you need to stop. And you know what? I praise God that I don't have a problem with that. But we're always around people in our culture. We're always flipping through Instagram. And the last thing I want is one of my kids to be like, oh, look what Poppy's looking at. Or one of you to see me and, oh, look what Pastor Mark's looking at. And sometimes Pastor Mark is in places he doesn't even know the people there. The other day I'm having breakfast on this little two-week honeymoon that me and Leilani have with the kids out of town. And some random guy out of nowhere in the middle of downtown, is that my pastor? And I, I saw him. I, didn't, I just kept eating. Is that my pastor? Pastor Mark. The guy came. He gave me a hug. And I had no idea who he was until he, uh, until he told me this huge story uh, on how I knew it. And then I remembered who he was. People are always looking at us. And so we need to be a good example. Some of us need to get rid of the junk that we're looking at. And you'll see that your life will begin to change. This is the last thing I'm going to read. Hebrews 12, 1, it says, we must get rid of everything that slows down our progress. What's slowing down your progress today? Get rid of it, especially the sin that won't let go. We must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. Determined. I am determined. I'm going to do this. And nothing is going to get in the way. And we must keep our eyes on Jesus who leads us. Get rid of the junk. Be determined. And stop looking at the past. And look to Jesus. And your life will be changed. My last question to you today is where do you need a reset in your life? Bow your heads right now and talk to God. God, show me. Ask him. Show me where I need a reset. Show me where I need a fresh start. God, I want to pursue you. God, I want my family to follow you, my future family to follow you. I want success in my life. Humble yourself today and say, God, reset me. Change me. Change my attitude. Change my negativity, my spirit of negativity, God. Change it. Reset it, God. Give me faith. Reset my faith, God. Reset my commitments to you. Reset my habits. invite you to stand up I want to pray with you I want to create a moment with you where we remember where the reset happened God where did the reset happen in my life oh it happened on January 8th 2023 on a Sunday morning 
in the most unlikely place in the city of Hialeah, God reset me and my life was never the same. Oh, when, when did your relationship start with your wife? You guys are so happy. Oh, I was reset on a Sunday morning. The Holy Spirit changed me because I asked him to specifically change this about me. He'll do it. He'll do it. I shared verse after verse after verse with you today about how God is a God of change, how God is a God of second chances, how God can redeem you and save you and give you life. And the life that he gives, the Bible says it's more abundantly. That means it's an overflowing life, a life that blesses everyone that is around you. So if you're here today and you want to reset in your life, I'm going to invite you to come up and I want to pray with you. I want to help you press that reset button right now and say, Jesus, reset his life. Jesus, reset her life. If there's anyone here that's not living in the dream that you once had, God, I need a reset in my life. If there's someone here struggling in their marriage, God, I need a reset in my marriage. People that are struggling with their kids, my relationship with my kids are not the same. God, I need a reset in my home. I feel like it's impossible. I feel like there's no way that my kids are going to listen anymore. They're so far gone. Today, God will change that. He will change it if you ask him to. Don't be like I am. I don't want to reset my phone. I don't want to reset my computer because I'm scared. I'm scared of the new OS. God has a new operating system for you today. And it is anointed by the Holy Spirit. And your life will never be the same. Hey, the same way that I have to call my friend Johnny for a reset, you probably came with someone today and you need to say, hey, help me reset my life. And you start that doing it with someone today. Let, help me reset. It's not you, it's me. Help me reset. Some of you need to grab the hand of the person next to you or in the other row and say, hey, I want to help press that button with you. Let's press it together. Let's start 2023. Reset. Reset my business. Reset my emotions. Reset my life in Jesus' name. Is there anybody else before we pray? They say, hey, Pastor Mark, I need a fresh start. There's nothing bad with a fresh start. There's nothing bad with a reset. Amen. Amen. Keep coming. Anybody else? All right. I'm going to pray, but I want to give you a chance to get that reset that moment. God, I thank you. I thank you for all these people that you created with reset buttons. And that reset button is named Jesus. It's the blood of Christ. It's the cross of Calvary. It is the resurrection on the third day. It is the king that promised, I will not leave you orphans. I will send you a friend. I will send you the Holy Spirit. It's the one that said, I will come back for you. Thank you, God, for our reset button, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that in this very moment, that guilt would wash away. That in this very moment, shame would wash away. Father, the mistakes of our past. Father, that we would receive your forgiveness and your cleansing. God, that only you can do, that 2023 would be the best year of our life, and not because of us, but because of you. Lord, I pray that as, as you reset all these lives, that you would draw them to the people that are going to walk with them in this reset, that you would give them the humility and the courage to reach out to a friend, to someone that's going to keep them accountable. To their commitment father that we would also commit to being part of the body being part of your body being part of the church contributing to the body in every aspect of our life so that we can keep growing stronger and better father and help us to continue to pinpoint as we go home as we prepare to go to bed tonight show us the things that we need to eliminate from our life the people that we need to eliminate from our life, the relationships, the business relationships that we need to cut so that we can make room for the blessing, so that we can make room for the better people, for the better uh, business relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. 
and we have the victory. And everybody says, amen. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, but every single person up here just scored a touchdown in life. And when somebody scores a touchdown, the arena explodes. And so these people just experience a touchdown in their life. Let's worship Jesus. Let's praise God. We're one team. We're one team and we scored big today in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Amen. Hey guys. Service is over. God bless you guys. I want to see you here next week. On Wednesday nights, we have a prayer service on Zoom. You can get all that information on the QR code. It's an incredible place where we can gather and pray for each other once a week. In the middle of the week, Friday, we have youth group. Next Sunday, we'll be here. If you're here for the first time, I have a gift that I want to give you. It's a God Loves Miami shirt. So go to the big banner that says you here and get your free gift. I love you, and we'll see you next Sunday.